my class, now we move to the last application of this chapter we drew project evaluation. Okay, so um, capital budgeting or investment decision is a very uh, one important decision in coverage finance. Uh, as you know, in chapter one, yeah, one of the three important decisions in corporate finance is investment decision. And in investment decision, it's not simply you find a good project to put your money on, but after you study this course, you know that the main point, the center point of project evaluation is the time and the risk of the future cash flow because all we talk about is the future. Yeah, the cash flow we have for the project, most of them are from the future. Yeah, so the uncertainty of the cash flow, or in other words, the risk of the cash flow will be the center of the investment decision. Okay. Okay. And in order to evaluate the investment uh, uh, project, um, then there, there are many indicators, there are uh, several approaches to do, but here in this course, we um, only use one simple approach, but the most popular one, yeah? That is MPV, IR, MIR, and DPP. Okay, first of all, net present value, NDV. Okay, to illustrate, uh, you know present value, right? Yeah, so imagine if you, um, so far we have, uh, you know, we buy an asset with this deposit money into the bank. And now suppose that we have a project, yeah, like an asset. That project generates some cash flow, yeah? One, two, three. Suppose that it had three years, the project was three years. And in year one, it generates cash flow one. Year two, we have cash flow two. And year three, we have cash flow three in general, yeah? So basically what we have done so far is we find the present value of the cash flow, right? BV, we take C at one, yeah, divided by, you know, a discount rate, one plus discount rate, one plus discount rate R, and plus C at three, power three. Yeah, this is what we have done. Yeah. But remember, in order to have this cash flow, you had to invest something at the beginning. Yeah. So I call the investment is CF0. It happened at zero. And because this CF0 is the outflow, it different from the inflow, the cash flow that generate, yeah, the in and out. So the outflow, I use the negative, the sign negative, yeah. So if I take into account this initial cash flow C at zero, then you see our present value now become net, net rong. Rong nghĩa là sao các bạn? Ví dụ như thu được nhập rong. Thu nhập rồng nghĩa là thu nhập đã trừ đi chi phí các bạn. Yeah, so the present value here, if I include the CF0 in the present value, so this one become net. So I add the net in front of the BV, and that's it. Yeah, that is the NBV. Okay, so the NBV have, basically they had two kind of cash flow. This is the outflow and this is the inflow. The C in principle, this is what you get, and this is what you pay, yeah? So a project, if you want to take it, a project is eligible if what you get, yeah, is larger than what you pay, right? So the CF0, yeah, had to be smaller than what you, what you earn. Then you get profit, yeah? So to use NBV to evaluate a project. After you have the NBV, you calculate the NBV, you have an amount of money. Yeah, you have the number and that number had to be, had to be positive. Yeah, so NBV had to be larger than euro in order to accept the project. Agree? Okay. Yeah. 
uh, here you see the NBV is positive and reset if the NBV is negative, is smaller than zero. What does that mean? If the NBV is smaller than zero, it means what you earn is not it's not enough to cover what you had to pay. Yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't cover the cost of the project. And of course, you have to take it into account the time value of money. And MVV is a very, the most uh, popular and a very important criteria to evaluate your project. Yeah. A positive MVV means that the investment is expected to add value to the firm. For example, this one, we have positive $181. It means uh, after you cover the cost, the added value that the project brings to the company is $181. Yeah, after we cover the cost. Okay, uh, that is the first criteria. The second criteria is payback period. Thời gian hoàn vốn hay là kỳ hoàn vốn. Yeah, and that is amount of time required for an investment to generate cash flow to recover it. Its initial cost. Uh, cái thời gian mà chúng ta cần để chúng ta hoàn lại cái vốn đầu tư đã bỏ ra ban đầu. Yeah, it's a very simple criteria and please take a look. Okay, for example, we have an investment that we had to invest 1000. Remember, it has negative convention. And this is the cash flow of that project. We had $200 in year one and $400 in year two and $600 in year three. Yeah, and now they ask, what is the payback period? Yeah, thời gian hoàn vốn là bao lâu. So what we are going to do, we accumulate the cash flow. Yeah, so accumulate means, so các bạn cộng dồn đúng không ạ? So $200 in year one, we add with $400 in year two, then we have $600 here, and we add with $600 in year three, and we have 12 hundred dollar in year three in accumulated cash flow yeah but we only need one thousand okay that is our, our initial investment yeah so in order to get back one thousand me take a look at accumulated cash flow by the end of year two we already earn six hundred yeah so we need four hundred left we need four hundred more in order to have one thousand dollar back Agree? So, but the year three earned $600. So that means we don't need the whole of the year three in order to get back our initial investment. But our payback period is somewhere between year two and year three. And how do you find that is such a number? Yeah. Okay. So the payback period, payback period equal to, I will begin with year two. Yeah, so year two, two years and plus. So after two years, we already earned 600. We still need how much more? Yeah, we earn 600. This is the accumulated cash flow. Yeah, two, year two. Okay, and then we divide it for the cash flow of year three. Yeah. So this is the cash flow of year three. Yeah. So we have about two year and plus two and a third year. Okay, please calculate yourself. Okay, this is advantages and disadvantages of payback periods. Please take a look. You can study yourself and please read more in the textbook. Yeah, I remember our textbook is Ross Westerfield and Jordan Fundamental Corporate Finance. Okay, one disadvantage of payback period is it doesn't care about the time value of money. You see. We just assume that this money had no time value. We add them like this, you know. And of course, it gives you a very fast number of payback period, the number of time you need to return your initial investment. But 
yeah, after you study the course, the corporate finance, you think, yeah, it's not, it's not the correct way to do, right? You, you take into account the time value of money. So we have another payback period that is called the payback period. Yeah, thời gian hoàn vốn có chi khấu. Okay, now we discount the money first before we accumulate them. Yeah. So here again, we have the initial investment of 1,000 and this is our discount rate. Because now we have the into account time value, so we need a discount rate. But year one, year two, year three, and year four. Okay, remember this example is different from the previous example, huh? Okay, and before we accumulate the cash flow, uh, we calculate the BV of the cash flow. Okay, 182 here is and if I take is equal to I explain why you have one hundred thousand ten percent. Yeah. And this three hundred thirty one that is this number. Yeah, the cash flow in year two divided for one plus ten percent power to blah blah blah. Yeah. And then now you can calculate the accumulated cash flow. Ah, discounted cash flow, huh? So 182, and you add 331, and you have 3, 1, and 5 here. Yeah? And again, and then you add this number to this number. Yeah? Okay, blah, blah, blah. And to see what you have. This is your accumulated cash flow. Yeah? So we need 1,000 back. And by the end of year three, we already earn one thousand thirty-nine dollar. So it's meaning our payback period is somewhere between year two and year three. Yeah, year two and year three. Okay, let's calculate discount payback period equal to two years and plus. Okay, and this is what we need to get back one thousand. And we already earn 153 by the end of year two. We already accumulate 113, sorry, 113. And in year three, what did we earn? In year three, we earn 526. Yeah, 526. Yeah, okay, so please calculate yourself. Okay, we have one example. Ordinary and discounted payback period. So now we put the two payback period in one example. One is the ordinary payback period and one is the discounted payback period. Okay, uh, the cash flow here and then this is the undiscounted one and this is the discounted one. This is the discount rate and then we accumulate. We uh, accumulate the cash flow. This one for undiscounted and this one for discounted. Okay, and we need one pound initial investment is three hundred. So here, yeah, the number is 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 already a round number. So we have the discount ordinary paper period is three year. Yeah, but for discounted cash flow, it take you yeah here we earn three hundred here we accumulate three hundred here, so it's four years. So discounted payback period is always longer than. Uh, ordinary discounted, uh, ordinary payback period. 